When you tell an employed person who has savings and investments and their life seems put together that everything is going to change, they might disagree with you. As pension funds in the US evaporate and savings hit the floor, only then will people start asking questions. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we are going to look at the status of not just the US, but basically all over the world. People are broke. They push it to the absolute maximum. I'm going to show you the statistics that go along with that today. Everything is becoming more affordable as well as people are becoming very irresponsible. And this happens to be cycles that collide against each other. And of course, we know the results. Now, I want to begin by taking a look at this out of CBS. Almost half of Americans can't pay for their basic needs. Okay, we are talking about extreme levels here, and that is quite unfortunate. There is a group in the United States and most of the Western world that is doing well, doing very well, in fact. However, a large percentage of people are not. So that's what we're talking about today. Four in 10 Americans are struggling to pay for their basic needs such as groceries or housing, a problem even middle class households confront. Okay, that's according to the Urban Institute. They did this study here and of course it's just a survey. It's just a select amount of individuals. It's not going to give us the whole picture of the US, but it is a pretty good way to look at things you can't necessarily survey every single person it's not going to happen but we get a sneak peek essentially despite the u.s economy being being near full employment that's a joke 39 percent of adults between 18 and 64 said that they experienced at least one type of material hardship in 2017. That is quite a significant number there when you think about it. And it's people from, you know, everywhere from 18 to 64. So that's something I just wanted to bring to you and make you think of what's really going on today. Is everything as good as they say it is? Do we really have full employment? Or are we be, you know, simply being fed lies? All right. The findings surprised the researchers who had expected to find high levels of hardship among the poor Americans, but hadn't predicted so many middle class families would also struggle to meet their basic needs. OK, the that may illustrate that the middle class income is no guarantee of protection from hardship. And I completely agree with that part of it. Of course, we need to understand what people are doing, what they're with their money and how they are going to repair all the damage that's in place. And, you know, with everything coming down the way it is, we need to be very worried for a lot of individuals. Adults reporting material hardship in 2017. This is the chart right here. Any hardship, 39.4%. Multiple hardship, nearly 24%. Food insecurity, believe it or not, is over 23%. Okay, that's significant. Medical bills, 18%, and so on. Okay, so this is a different levels here and i just wanted to show you that because i think it's important to really look deeper into what they're exactly experiencing this is going as it said for people so-called middle class individuals and i would say it's even for individuals let's say in the upper middle class because if you get a better paying job if you get a bonus at the end of the year if you are somehow granted a little bit of money you're just going to find yourself further into debt that's what the average person does they get a raise at work they buy a bigger house they get a bonus at the end of the year they buy a new car they simply find a way to make it part of their new environment they don't take the money and invest it properly or savings or anything like this they are basically throwing it right out the window throwing it down the drain now i thought this was interesting here average and median household savings so if we look at the average i believe this is in the entire us the average suddenly looks really good but you look at the median and that's not good at all because a lot of people are basically right at the floor but there are some individuals that have millions and millions and millions of dollars so it skews things but if you look at the median instead it gives us a different picture okay but i think we need to alter ultimately drill down further whenever we make an analysis like this to just to say the average savings in the United States is that's not a good way to really put it you know you, you can look at that I think it's good to look at but don't put too much weight on it that's all average and meeting savings 
levels by age at the top all households you can see wow excellent you know 274,000 for the boomers that's so great but look at the bottom median all households 24,000 50% of boomers are headed into or already in retirement have less than $24,000 in savings that starts to be a little bit different when we start to look at it under a different lens things appear very different don't they just something i wanted to show you here i'll move on starter home affordability hits a decade low here's why the u.s housing market is cooling prices are just too high and this is ultimately what i have said for a long time look if it's too expensive to buy a home people can't buy a home if the home costs too much or it's the interest these interest rates are very much a problem for individuals they can't afford their current payments practically as soon as they go up a little bit and by the way even let's say a one percent increase on their mortgage is going to be a huge huge difference for them on a monthly basis Okay, so that's how you need to look at it. What are they paying now? And of course, how this is all going to play out over that time period. The property market, after years of price gains that outpaced income growth is showing signs of the uh, slowing, slowing down basically. And we have this issue that I think a lot of individuals within the real estate industry are starting to pick up on. They're starting to acknowledge. Yes, things are slow. They're going to try and do what they can, but mortgage rates are coming up, so it's harder to convince individuals, okay? Starter homes are now more costly to purchase than any time since 2008 when the last boom came to a crashing halt in the second quarter. First-time buyers needed almost 23% of their income to afford a typical entry-level home. 23% of their income. And that's significant. We're not talking about nice places. We're talking about starter homes. They're probably fixer-uppers or maybe they're tiny little shoe boxes. 23% of their income, that's significant. But again, going back into the levels we saw in 2008. So you need to always pay attention when we exceed or get back to those levels. And for many indicators, of course, that seems to be what's happening right now digging deeper monthly share of income first-time home buyers need to finance a home you can see that on the chart form here same information i covered in the bloomberg article and last but not least for the first time in nearly two years seattle area no longer leads the nation in home price increases all right so we have the data now and it is in fact can you guess las vegas that's right has surpassed Seattle in price growth. Now, does that mean that the prices have dropped significantly in Seattle? No, it just means that Las Vegas real estate is just booming even faster. There's probably a lot of investors going in there, buying a lot of stuff that's gonna simp sit empty. Uh, we saw that happening 10 years ago, and the same thing will probably happen again. Entire subdivisions were built and nobody lived in them. Maybe they live in them today, but they sat empty for many, many years. In fact, we had this uh, issue 19 million I think it was at the absolute peak 19 million empty homes I don't know how that all got filled up I, I don't see how that's possible but hey that's what they said so looking at this here is just talking about the issue of there's a cooling market in areas but uh, Las Vegas is certainly roaring faster and faster all right so the numbers on here I don't think it says, but the last time I checked, it was about 12 to 13%, if I remember correctly. That's going from memory. But year-over-year -year growth is just absolute insanity in both of these areas, looking at Seattle and Las Vegas. Okay, so I'm going to end it there. Hope you found it informative. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. That's all you got to do to support this channel. Give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button as well you know when you do so you're going to be joining over 130,000 people on the channel so i do appreciate all of you subscribing and if you want the financial education you were not taught in schools well these two books have it all you can check it out at the link in the description and if you're more interested in the audiobook version you can get that at the moneygps.com